Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a spoiler free book review of Soma and Disorcer by Carolyn Sparks, book two in the Embrace series. The ebook was sent to me through NetGalley in exchange for an awesome review. So as always, all thoughts and opinions on my channel are my own, and the book being sent to me doesn't affect that whatsoever. So as I mentioned before, the ebook was sent to me, but I actually went out and bought my own copy, and this is for two reasons. The first one is that I own the first book and paperback, How to Tame Beats in Seven Days, and the second is because I like the book so much and I prefer physical copies. So I just went out and bought my own copy because I wanted it on my shelf and I wanted the physical copy because as I said. Said, I prefer that. So getting it right into the book review, there are a couple things that you kind of need to understand before going into the series, which I do want to mention that Carolyn Sparks does an amazing job at reiterating and explaining and it is done in a way that doesn't affect the pace of the novel or the plot of it or anything like that. The universe and everything, all the rules of it that's being explained is done very well and I want to mention this before because in fantasy no novels it can be really difficult to keep track of everything that's going on and the different rules and names of everything. So I just want to say that if you're worried about that, I didn't have any problem keeping up with the rules of the world. So going into the little bit of history that you kind of need to understand, there is a mainland that's broken up into multiple kingdoms. The mainland is full of corruption and greed and the rulers of the mainland kingdoms are greedy and only care about themselves and the people suffer for that greatly which causes even more corruption and the lower classes. The mainland is full of violence and war. There is a sun god and there is two moon goddesses because they have two moons in their sky and the goddesses are actually forbidden to be worshipped on the mainland and that is for really one reason. Actually I think it's for multiple reasons but one is because the royalty of the mainland they worship the sun god. They worship war, they worship strength, they worship men so that is one reason. Also another reason is because two times a year the two moons because as I mentioned before there are two moon goddesses to go with each moon. The two moons embrace which is when they kind of pair up like this kind of like the solar eclipse that happened so they just kind of come in from each other two times a year and any child born under the embrace moons has special abilities. Now sometimes it's really obvious what they have and other times it's harder to tell. No matter what any child born under that moon will have some sort of ability, whether it be small or big. The rulers of the mainland are greedy and they they want more power. So they're jealous of the fact that these babies, these kids, are being born with these special abilities with, because of nothing other than being born on a special date. So they actually decreed that any child born under the embrace moons has to die. Now, not every child dies, obviously, because a lot of people slip through the cracks, whether they just don't be honest with the date of the child's birth because their ability can be easily hidden, or because they're in the lower class and they don't have anyone that's of importance to actually pay attention to, whether or not the child has any powers. Another thing is that a lot of noble families or royalty that has a child born in the embrace moons actually sends their child away and fakes their death, etc. and so forth. So that's actually where we, get, where we get the Isle of the Moon. The Isle of the Moon is off of the mainland and is the only place so far that can freely worship the goddesses and it's not a crime to be born embraced. So that's actually where we have the story start up when we start in the first book, How to Tanabees in Seven Days. We are at the convent and where all these girls were brought as babies and were raised. Each of them has a special ability. They are embraced. All of them don't know who they are. They don't know what, where the heritage is from. They don't know what kingdom they come from. Now, there's are, there are little things that can kind of push that along and kind of be like, okay, well, this one girl has pointed ears, so she's obviously from this kingdom. This one girl has this, like, really uh, curly red hair, so she's obviously from that kingdom. So there's a little bit of their parents that kind of pushes them to understand that they're from this certain kingdom, but as for their heritage, where they come from, then the family, sex, and so forth, they have no idea about that. And it's partially for their safety. That way, if they can't tell anyone anything that they shouldn't know, and if they don't know who they are, then obviously they can't go and contact their family or cause any trouble or anything like that. So it's partially for their protection. And now, in the first book, we saw Luciana become queen of one of the kingdoms, and that is actually where we start up in the second book, Brigitte, which is Luciana's kind of like sister friend because they're both both raised on the Isle of the Moon, but they aren't actually like blood related, but they call each other sisters. Brigitte actually is going to visit her sister Luciana, the queen of this new land, and in this new land, Luciana has decreed that if you're embraced, you're safe, you can worship the goddesses, and they're actually a fair kingdom now and are constantly trying to better their people and make their kingdom something to be proud of. So that is where we meet Brigitte. She's on a ship and she is going to see her sister when her ship is attacked. And during this attack, she actually finds out that she is the lost princess of Torrent. The Princess of Torrent was supposedly killed as a 
baby during some uh, rough times of Torin and when these two kingdoms were to come together and instead there was war, etc. and so forth. Everyone thought that Brigitte was actually dead, but turns out that her father just sent her to the Isle of the Moon. Now Brigitte is dealing with the fact that she is the lost princess and that her half-evil brother decided that now that he knows of her existence, he wants her back, which is one of the ships that went to attack and try to take her back. But we also have Rupert. Rupert is also embraced. He actually has control of the wind, which makes him an amazing pirate and people call him a sorcerer. So Rupert is a pirate. He's one of the most infamous pirates in the ocean. So Rupert wants revenge on Torrin and he, he wants the kingdom or at least the royal family to be ripped apart. He wants revenge. He wants something that can't really be returned to him, but he decided that he'll just take everything else away from them in the meantime. When he finds out Brigitte is actually alive, he decides this is the best time to get back at the royal family. So he decides to kidnap Brigitte, takes her away, and is trying to use her as a pawn against her brother. So throughout this time, Brigitte is struggling with a new identity. She's struggling with her powers as well because Brigitte has the power to uncover secrets and or lost items. Now the secrets part she tries to keep as hidden as possible because she doesn't like the backlash that comes from it because a lot of people, if they have a secret, they want to keep it hidden. And more times than not, she accidentally says something or does something that really hurts somebody because of their secret. And she doesn't like how they treat her afterwards and she just decided, you know, if that's a secret you want to keep, then you can keep it. But Rupert has this weird effect on her. His secrets, his revenge, his emotional and hurt past is so powerful that it actually causes Brigitte to kind of get glimpses of his past. So she is dealing with her, this like heightened ability, really, while also trying to figure out, again, what's going on with the family. She's trying to figure out who Rupert is and what's going on with him, what her family did to him, why he wants revenge so badly, and what horrible thing happened in his past because of the torn royal family. It's constantly kind of like this back and forth between Brigitte and Rupert of them trying to figure out who is this other person? And what do they know? What are their thoughts on this? Rupert actually comes to realize that Brigitte isn't innocent. She didn't know anything about her past. She doesn't like her family. She doesn't like what she's heard about her family. And she hates what they've done to all these other people. Unfortunately, though, Rupert is a little late to the game. He figures out that Brigitte isn't innocent and he decides he needs to protect her. And he doesn't want to use her as a pawn anymore. Unfortunately, his plans have already gone so far that he doesn't know if he can backtrack. He doesn't know if he can stop it. And that might put not only Brigitte in trouble, but also her family and his family and so many other friends. So that is kind of like what the story is going through. That's going through two people kind of dealing with their past, dealing with their identity, as well as this constant battle that's going on between them as well as this kingdom. So I absolutely love this story. I think it was amazing. It has pirates in it, which I am a huge fan of. I love pirates. I love stories with pirates in it. So that's a huge plus for me. I also love R Rupert and Brigitte. I love the relationship, how they're just like going back and forth. I just, I loved how the story was written, how the romance was developed. Well, it was a little flower and tacky yet parts it was it obviously it is a romance and I did was going into the series a little hesitantly because of the fact of the cover and the title it kind of made it sound like you know a happily ever after romance kind of thing and while it is that and it does have those moments there's so much more to it and I love those moments and I loved how raw and emotional like, it got in the story so some pluses for the story it is fast-paced it is action-packed and it has adventure it also has a strong romance in it obviously I can't mention that enough this is a romance novel so if you're going into it just know that because I know there's some people that don't like romance novels and then they read a novel and they're bashing it but it's like but it's a romance novel why did you read it if you knew it was a romance novel and you don't like romance novels so I don't understand people that do that but I just want to be very clear this is a romance novel there are flowery tacky parts but there are also so much more. There is fight scenes, there's action scenes, there's magic, there's pirates. I love pirates. For me, that's all of the things that I really need. It's a fast-paced, action-packed story, and I loved it. Now, with that being said, and I know I'm gushing about it, I'm also trying not to say certain things because this is spoiler-free. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff that I kind of want to talk about, spoilers, I'm not going to go there. But there is one thing that I wasn't a huge fan of. It, it only had, it pertains to this one scene. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because, like I said, this is spoiler-free. But I'm going to try to tell you in a way that doesn't spoil it. All right, so there is one scene in here that just, it really irks me. It has to do with something where the authors have to be really careful with when writing a story. So a character can be dynamic. We all, we all know that you don't want a flat character and they can have multiple different layers. They can have different actions and different things going on in their life can affect them in different ways and do different things. So we all know that. But at the same time, a character has certain personality traits. They, they, it is more logical that they're gonna go down a certain path. In this one scene though, Kieran Sparks had this character 
do something that was completely out of character. There was no hint that this character could possibly go down this path or had those feelings or could do what they did and still be true to the character. And that scene felt so forced. I'm writing different stories and I'm messing with characters and, I, and I'm figuring out that you cannot force a character to be something or to do something, whether you want the story to go that way or not. I have found out multiple times that you can't just name a character and walk away. I've named characters and then renamed them five other times because that name just didn't fit with what I saw until I found the name that fit. I also know that there are certain scenes that th this character, it's like, I want them to do this, but at the same time, they wouldn't logically do that and still be true to who they are. It's just how human nature is. Now, it, it is completely possible that someone does something that's completely out of character, but there is some sort of hint, some sort of step that you kind of hint the reader along going, all right, so I know they're acting like a complete another ass here, or I know they're acting like a complete another like white knight or whatever, like really nice and chivalrous and blah blah blah. But white knight has this dark side that you know we'll, we'll see the little tidbits of. Also, this supposed bad boy has this good side, and they're constantly like fighting their good side because they want to be bad. So we see these these little traits coming through, and we have a hint that they could possibly go down a different path if the right situation came up. But I just saw none of this when it came to this character and then there was the scene came along and it was just completely out of character and completely forced and it was just like he would not have done that he wouldn't have said that like I can see that he would have done that action that he did but I don't think he would have said what he did that was the only thing that I didn't like about the novel and I know why Keelan Sparks did it she was trying to get that ha happily ever after she was trying to close up the story and she needed that one character to do what he did to be able to make that possible completely understand the logic behind it I just don't think the scene was the right bet. I think that she could have gone a different route, and I don't know what it is, but I'm pretty sure if I think about it long enough, I could figure it out. But I think that it was a bad choice to make him do that. But again, this was only one scene. I haven't had a problem with any of that throughout the rest of the story. And even after that one scene was done, she went back to an amazing novel. So I just want, that was just something I wanted to rant about. Hopefully I didn't confuse the hell out of you guys, because like I said, this is spoiler free. And that's something that really irks me, especially now that I'm trying to write more. And I'm starting to have my own problems with characters and figuring things out. And and having the story evolve in a way that maybe I'm not 100% like a fan of, but it's just how the story is going, how the characters are evolving. As someone who is trying to be an author, I'm starting to pay attention a little bit more to some of these details. Overall, I really love this novel. I think it's amazing fantasy romance. I think it's action-packed. I think it's developed really well, except for that one scene, obviously. I highly recommend you guys check it out if you're interested in this sort of thing. I am going to continue to read on with the series, and I can't wait for the next book to come out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on this video, as well as this novel. Maybe you read things by Carolyn Sparks, and you're not sure about this novel, or anything else you want to talk to me about i would love to have a conversation with you guys i hope you guys are having an amazing day and i will see you again soon push me down to the ground what goes around comes around you won't put the flame out you can't get to me say what you want to say go take it all away but i'm here to stay no you can't get to me and there is no